I put the new iPhone 12 Pro up against a 4K mirrorless camera, and the results might shock you. Apple has always produced some amazing tools for filmmakers, including their new M1 chip that they just announced for their new Macs. That is gonna change the way that filmmakers edit. But another piece of tech that's been blowing the minds of YouTubers recently is the new iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. With Apple giving filmmakers the new HDR video capabilities, it's kind of like giving an iPhone a raw image to work with. It's been really amazing to see what filmmakers and what, what artists have been doing with this new camera. Also, disclaimer, this video is strictly to talk about the video capabilities of the new iPhone. I'm not going to cover photo at all. If you want to look at photo and those specs, there are plenty of other YouTubers that will tell you all about that and give a much more in-depth review than I would. So this video is for the filmmaker. To compare the new iPhone, I chose the Lumix G7. The Lumix G7 actually has a pretty clean color codec and the fact that it's a micro four thirds sensor, comparing that to a super teeny tiny iPhone sensor is about the closest I can get for the same price range as well as the lens capabilities. A GoPro would have been a really comparable option, but when we're talking about this, we're talking about the filmmaker. We're not talking about the run and gun person because we already know that the iPhone is perfect for that. The real question that we're asking here is can a filmmaker use it? In this next clip I'm gonna show you, we put the exact same settings on the Lumix G7 as we did on the new iPhone 12 Pro, and I lit it exactly how I would have for any camera. Now the top is cam A, the bottom is camera B. Comment down below which one you think is gonna be the iPhone 12 Pro. Uno. Shot four. Ah, oh, dang. Every time. <laughs> Got you. Hmm. Uno. Skip you, skip you, skip you, draw four, uno, and done. I knew you were set. Another one for the book. GG. These are the results. Camera A was the Lumix G7 setup, and camera B was the new iPhone 12 Pro. I honestly was kind of shocked. They were really comparable. But really looking at the two images, it's hard to tell unless you have a really good eye for that. The average Joe is not gonna be able to tell which is which. Now, if you're an average Joe and you were able to tell which is which, hit that like button and subscribe. And surprisingly, color grading the iPhone was a lot easier than color grading the Lumix G7. I felt like the Lumix G7 just had a really high contrast to it and it just, it had a digital look. And the iPhone had a little bit more of a film look to it. It just made it a lot easier to color grade. So now let's see some real world comparisons between the Lumix G7 and the iPhone 12 Pro. So here, here's my honest review of the new iPhone 12 Pro. It's good. I was very impressed with a lot of things from the new iPhone. Stabilization was probably the biggest thing. The fact that all of those shots from the iPhone were handheld. It looks smooth. There's no post stabilization on it. And the F1.6 on the new wide lens, it's creamy. It's really clean. It gives you some really good aperture. And with the third party app, you can actually control the focus. That was essential for comparing this video. So who would I recommend the new iPhone 12 Pro to? I would recommend this to TikTokers, beginner YouTubers that are like bloggers or beauty bloggers, things like that. To the novice, to the medium person that's trying to get into the field of video work, whether that be weddings, whether that be short films or intense YouTube, stuff like this. I don't think that the iPhone is there 
quite yet. Maybe if you add the anamorphic lenses from Moment and a couple of other utilities like a gimbal and like rigs and other stuff like that, it could be capable as that, but I still don't think it's there yet. It's close. It's really close. There are some directors who believe that the future of movies is in smartphones, and I don't believe that. After using the Alexa Mini, after using even the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K to tell stories, I just, there, there's a huge difference. There's a huge gap. And I always think that you can tell an amazing story without better gear. There was a short film competition that I went to that there was somebody that won first that shot a short film on a Nintendo DS, a freaking Nintendo DS, and they won because their story was amazing. It was really well told, it was hilarious, it was color graded, it looked great. Again, there when you're producing a blockbuster film that's gonna be blown up onto an insanely large screen, you need a bigger camera, you need more resolution, you need better quality. And that, that just is something that a filmmaker can't give up, it can't give away. And so I don't think that iPhones are the future of filmmaking just yet. I think like they need to have a camera that's like the size of the entire iPhone in order to do that. And I just don't think that's gonna happen. Now though, if you wanna make YouTube videos and you don't need the nicest camera because you're not promoting that type of stuff, with my channel, I do camera reviews, I do gear reviews, I do filmmaking tips and tricks. My video should look professional and that's why I shoot it on my Blackmagic Pocket 4K camera because I want it to look professional. I shoot in 4K raw for crying out loud. <laughs> so if I switch to the new iPhone 12 Pro, it just wouldn't look professional and people wouldn't take my channel seriously. Now for my wife who her entire point of her channel is to produce information for people. She does life coaching and her whole her whole point is to produce this information. An iPhone is a great choice for her. So I think that the iPhone 12 Pro would be awesome for her. So maybe I'll buy it for her. But for me, I, I wanna show you guys what, what good quality looks like. I wanna show you what cinema quality looks like and I can't do that with the iPhone 12 Pro. So if you wanna get into filmmaking, I highly recommend either the Lumix G7 or something similar and get that rig set up because that's gonna get you into the into the filmmaking world. You're gonna know how to run a camera, you're gonna know how to run rigs, you're gonna know how to color grade correctly. All of that stuff is gonna be much more helpful to you if you get a mirrorless camera or DSLR that shoots 4K video and that's gonna help you with that. You're not gonna be able to get, in that, get into that field as effectively if you're shooting on an iPhone. Hit that like button if you're an Android user. So final thoughts, I'm very impressed. Apple is doing some amazing things and they seriously blow me away every day. They're an amazing company, do a great job. There's also other amazing companies out there that are blowing my mind every day that are doing a great job. And so I'm not just, <laughs> not just trying to tree hug Apple right now because I know it sucks to hear it all the time. Like it depends and really like with this video, it depends. But I mean, my final say is the iPhone is an amazing camera. And if you need a camera to fit in your pocket and something on the go, go for it, buy it. It's awesome. Number one, 10 out of 10, fantastic camera. I think it's the best that's Apple's, that Apple's done and it's just gonna get better. And also the fact that it's a camera that you can watch movies on, search the internet and send texts and receive calls from. Yeah, it beats the Lumix G7 there by a landslide. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you made it all the way through, maybe think about subscribing or hitting that bell button so you never miss out on new young filmmaker content. Good luck filmmaking. Thank you.